This is Pastor Richard, and you're watching Anchored in Christ, a weekly vlog from St. Paul's Lutheran Church to know what we believe and why we believe it, to be anchored in Christ's word for us. This week we have a phenomenal text from Luke chapter 7. Let's get right into it. In Luke chapter 7, we read the following. Uh, one of the Pharisees asked him, that is Jesus, to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, well, she brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him, that is Jesus, at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Now, when we think about this, what's going on in this text is actually quite uh, quite phenomenal. You have a Pharisee and you also have a woman who is a sinner and then you have Jesus. You see what characteristic, characteristically happens is this, when it comes to Christ and his ministry, when it comes to law and gospel, the law has a way of doing two things. Uh, it brings us down, revealing our sin, and it reveals our full depravity. It brings us down to the point where we admit we're poor, miserable sinners. And then the gospel also then is all about the goodness of God to us as sinners. It is unconditional. It is too good to be true. And so individuals like this woman who is a sinner, uh, she understands that she is at the bottom as a sinner. I mean, my goodness, she is uh, weeping and, and taking the crown of her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. She understands she's right there at the bottom. And so when she's right there at the bottom, she's able to receive that goodness of Jesus. But the Pharisee, now here's the point, to the Pharisee, for those who are pharisaical, those of us who have our legalistic hearts, the law will always be too stern and the gospel will always be too good to be true. In fact, the reason why that is, is it offends our sinful nature. You see, our old Adam does one of two things. Our old Adam wants to take the law and diminish the law, water down, so the law is not so stern for us, not to level us as poor, miserable sinners. And then the old Adam wants to take that gospel and take that gospel and then take it and make it conditional, to make it manageable. In other words, we take the law, we lift it up, we take the gospel, we bring it down, so that we can stand, our old Adam can stand in between the two and manage both the law and the gospel and then have them within the control. But as we see in scriptures, time and time again, Christ and as well as the Apostle Paul and all the prophets, they take that law and they level us as sinners, bring us all the way to the bottom. And then they proclaim the goodness of Jesus, which is up here, that is unconditional, that is wonderful. And the old Adam freaks out because the old Adam says, I can't bridge this gap, which is the whole point. It means that it should be death to the old Adam because we die in Christ and we are raised in Christ. The law is to be preached and proclaimed in its full severity, leveling us to the ground as sinners. And then the gospel itself is unconditional. It's too good to be true. It is wonderful. It's phenomenal. And that is the long gospel at work. And as we see it in the scriptures, in this particular example of Luke 7, we see that sinful woman who she understands who she is and she receives the goodness of Christ. But that Pharisee, all oh, those Pharisees, they struggle so much being depreciated in their humanity, understanding that they're sinful and they do not like that unconditionalness of the gospel itself. So as we think about this text and all the texts of scriptures, we always want to be understanding that the gospel must be proclaimed in its full sweetness and the law in its full severity. Because therein, as we hear the law and the gospel, is the end of our old Adam and the proclamation of Christ who is for us. So I hope that helps, and we'll catch you next time.